there are plenty of ways to split up and categorize Linux distros, whether it's a rolling release or a static slash point release. What the distro base is, Arch, Debian, Fedora, things like that. Whether it's a systemd or a non-systemd distro. But one thing that doesn't really get that much love is what is contained within the packages. Does your package manager ship application binaries or application source code? So a binary based Linux distribution, which to be completely honest, is most of them are things like Debian, Fedora, Red Hat, Ubuntu, Manjaro, Arch, and the list goes on and on and on and on. Because nowadays, this is basically the primary way that package management is done. So with the Arch example, let's say I want to download something like Alacrity or Firefox or really anything else. I'm going to go to Pac-Man and say, download Alacrity. And what Pac-Man is going to do is it's going to download an application binary. This is the pre-compiled source code and then basically stick it where it needs to go. Now, there are some exceptions with applications that don't get compiled. Things like Python programs and Ruby programs and things like that. But when considering languages that do get compiled, it is going to be a compiled binary. Now, just because they're downloading a pre-compiled binary, it doesn't mean they're always downloading the exact same thing. So you might see a deb file, you might see a targz file, all of these are just different ways to ship the application to you. What's important though is inside of that package is a pre-compiled binary. Now you'll also see a binary package manager with third-party packaging systems like Flatpak and Snap as well. While nowhere near as popular, there are some source-based distros that do exist, with Gen2 by far being the biggest. And then obviously distros based on Gen2, things like Fun2 for example. There are some others that do exist, one of them that I wouldn't really consider a distro, things like Linux from scratch. And then there are some other smaller distros which nobody really uses, but they certainly do exist. So if you want to install something on Gen2, instead of downloading the binary for the application, it's instead going to download the project source code, and then the source code is going to be compiled on your local system, producing the binary, and the package manager basically sticks it wherever it needs to go. Now, this isn't like a zero-sum game where if it's a binary package manager, everything is a binary, or if it's a source-based package manager, everything is source code. As I mentioned before, there are some cases where things just don't get compiled, so that's just not going to be compiled in a binary package manager, and Gen2 does have some options for really big packages being pre-compiled. Things like your kernel, things like browsers like Firefox and Brave, that compiling takes literal hours. But when considering if it's a source-based or a binary-based, you look at what the vast majority of packages are. Gen2, the vast majority is source code, and Arch, Ubuntu, things like that, the vast majority are binaries. Like with basically every distro adopting Pulse Audio and SystemD, there must be a very good reason why the distribution of distributions is so lopsided towards binary package managers. So let's go over the benefits of both the systems, starting with the binaries. The first benefit should be incredibly obvious. It is objectively quicker to install a pre-compiled binary than having to compile the source code and then install it. Even if it's just a very small and basic application, let's say you have a C program that's like, a hundred lines of code. It's not going to take really that long to compile the program, but it is going to take longer than just it already being compiled. But take that from being a hundred lines of code and scale it up to something like a kernel or a web browser or anything else like that. The kernel can take on like a slow system hours or a day to compile if you have a really slow system, Compare that to installing on something like Arch. It takes the download time and then however long it takes to run your post update hooks. So maybe five, ten minutes if you have a decent connection. Ten minutes or multiple hours. It's pretty obvious which one's better. Another benefit you get is a typically much simpler installation process. If you want to install something on Arch, there's no build options to worry about or anything else like that. 
I just install the package and it's basically done. Whereas over on the Gen 2 side, sure, you can just install stuff and not modify anything, but it does expose those build options. So if you want to start getting into the weeds, you can do that. But just having that exposed does make it a little bit more complex and make you think that maybe you do need to modify some of that stuff, even if you might not need to. One thing to worry about when you're compiling an application is sometimes it's going to have different build or compile dependencies than it would have when you are running the application. Those are your runtime dependencies. And by having more dependencies on an application, this means there are more things that could potentially break. But with a binary-based package manager, you just don't have to worry about any of the build dependencies because all of the compilation was done before the app got anywhere near your system. Now, these things aren't going to break that often. They're usually, you know, well-tested and well-known applications, things like Git and various popular C compilers. Under some situations, it could still be a problem. The other thing you might have to worry about is the scripts that are used to actually build the application. Sometimes they aren't set up to work in every single environment and may not function correctly on your system. But on something like Ubuntu, that's just not a concern you have. Another thing that the binary based system is going to do is address problems that application might have on that specific distro. Let's say certain other dependencies aren't set up in a way that application expects or things are missing and things like that. My favorite example of this being with Arch, how it decided to break OBS by not including the browser feature because they didn't want to include the correct version of Chrome CEF or something of that nature. If Arch was a source-based distro though, you would try to compile in that feature and be very confused by why the dependency that should be there isn't supporting it. And then from the distro maintainer and application developer side, it makes it much, much easier to handle things like issue reporting and bug reporting. If you say you're using Firefox 100 on Ubuntu 22.04, they know exactly how that was compiled and what options were used. So it's much easier to recreate that environment and try to recreate the bug. But considering that Gen 2 actually has users, and assuming that everybody on that distro isn't just a masochist, there are clearly benefits to source-based package managers. They're not benefits that affect most people, but for the ones who need them, they are great to have. One of those being complete control over how the application is compiled. Take OBS, for example. OBS has this nice module system where you can decide what features you actually want compiled into the application. Let's say, for example, you don't need the browser functionality and some random other things. You don't have to have those even compiled into the final product, so those features just won't be available, and because they're not in the final product, you're going to also have a smaller binary. How much smaller is going to depend on the application itself, but it is going to be a smaller result. Now, this being available is sort of completely dependent on what is available for that software. But even if it doesn't have a really nice module system, you still have access to the build options, and that is going to give you a lot of control. While you can always go and audit the code for whatever program you're downloading on something like Arch by going to the project's repo, by downloading a binary, you have to trust that the binary that you're downloading is actually the program you expect it to be. Now, assuming the repo hasn't been taken over, generally you're going to trust what your distro is giving you. But if you're the sort of person who likes to go and audit every bit of code you install, that is something that is really easy to do when you have the source code directly in your system. On that note, because you have the source code, applying patches and modifying the code is basically trivial, and in many cases, kind of encouraged to do if that's what you need to do. And the last thing is less computation overhead for the maintainers. Sure, they do need to go and make sure the build scripts they're shipping actually do work, the source code they're shipping does actually compile, but they don't need to make sure that every single user is downloading a pre-compiled binary of the application. They just need to make sure that things are working 
and then pretty much go from there. This makes pushing out updates much easier and much cheaper in many ways. So let me know down below, do you use a binary based distro, do you use a source based distro, and why do you use them? I would love to know. So if you like this video, I'm going to go and like the video. If you really like the video and you want to become one of these amazing people over here, go check out my Patreon, subscribe, join the Pay link in the description down below. I've got a podcast called Tech Over Tea. I've got a gaming channel called Brody Robertson Plays. That's going to be it for me and I'm out.